My name is Elaine Mack. Uh, I'm a professor of empirical study of public law at the Erasmus University Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, and this year I am a teacher at the Academy of European Public Law, uh, which takes place in the framework of the European Public Law Organization. Uh, the course that I'm teaching concerns the legitimacy of uh, the functioning of rule of law institutions in the European context. Uh, and so uh, with the students um, I have discussed the functioning of Parliament in the European context um, and uh, I will discuss with them about judicial dialogues uh, in the last session of the course. Um, judicial dialogues uh, concern the interaction between national courts in EU member states um, with the European Court of Justice, uh, but also um, the interaction between courts in different member states amongst themselves. Uh, and when we consider uh, this interaction, uh, we can um, look at actual references that we find in the case law of the European Court of Justice and in the case law of national courts. Uh, but we can also consider the informal dialogues which take place behind the scenes. Uh, and which take the form of um, exchanges between judges in networks, uh, meetings at conferences, or individual contacts. Uh, during the course, uh, we will um, discuss uh, the influence on, uh, of dialogues between courts uh, on uh, the further development of European integration. Uh, and we will see that um, the European integration uh, can be further enabled or, on the other hand, constrained by the approaches of courts and judges in this respect. Um, if judges uh, take an approach of cooperation uh, and seek for further integration of legal concepts, um, then um, this can uh, stimulate uh, the uh, integration between EU member states. And there we see that both uh, the uh, formal interaction uh, is important through references between courts in member states and the European Court of Justice, uh, but also very important is the informal dialogue between courts and judges, uh, where through informal exchanges a deeper understanding of uh, specific similarities between national contexts and of uh, remaining differences uh, can be realized. And so an important aspect of this course is to consider not only um, the legal analysis of sources, uh, so the consideration um, of EU treaties and legislation, the consideration of important case law uh, and um, the uh, writings of legal authors. Uh, during the course, um, furthermore, we will also consider uh, social legal aspects of the functioning of European institutions. And this means that we um, will um, consider research uh, about the actual day-to-day -day functioning of parliaments in the European Union and the functioning of courts in the EU context. Um, and by considering uh, this um, empirical information, we can get, get a view of um, the um, way in which uh, European theories work in practice. Uh, and then that gives information, for, for instance, on um, the actual achievements of instruments of better regulation uh, or uh, the achievements uh, of interaction between the European Court of Justice and national courts. Um, and so with the students, I started out by discussing different um, theoretical perspectives uh, on the legitimacy of uh, rule of law institutions in Europe. Uh, and um, through this framework, we um, try to achieve a better understanding uh, of rulemaking and judicial decision making in the multi-level context. Uh, we started out from the classic rule of law framework, which is familiar to legal scholars, and then we connected that uh, with the framework of new governance, uh, the framework of public-private interaction, and the framework of um, formal and informal dialogues between actors in Europe. Uh, and by connecting the, these different perspectives uh, on rulemaking and judicial decision making, we were able uh, to identify strong points uh, of uh, the um, functioning of parliaments and courts in Europe, uh, but also we, we were able to identify weak points. Mm -hmm.